John Wilkes Booth. He was the illegitimate son of a famous British actor who had immigrated to America with his mistress. Booth also performed in the theater and by 1865 was a very famous actor. Booth was very opposed to abolitionism and had joined the Richmond Greys, a volunteer militia company. He attended the hanging of John Brown in 1859. When the war came, Booth supported the South in slavery, but he promised his mother he wouldn't join the army and instead continued his acting career, performing throughout the North and the South. Booth blamed the catastrophic state of the nation on Lincoln and began making plans to kidnap him, conspiring with known Confederate sympathizers. Booth went to hear Lincoln's impromptu speech after Lee's surrender. When Lincoln pushed for black suffrage, Booth was angry and said, that is the last speech he will ever give. Three days later, when picking up his mail at Ford's Theater, Booth learned that Lincoln, Grant, and their wives would be attending that night's play, Our American Cousin. Booth was familiar with the theater's layout, having performed there several times, and determined it would be a perfect time to strike. That evening, he met with his fellow conspirators to finalize their plans. At exactly 10 p.m., Booth would shoot Lincoln and stab Grant. Lewis Powell would stab Secretary of State William Seward. George Adzerod would kill Vice President Andrew Johnson, who was staying at the Kirkwood Hotel, and David Harold would assist with the escape. Their plan was to throw the government into confusion by killing the president and the next two men in the line of succession. The Lincoln's party was late and arrived at about 10.15. The Grants had not come as Mrs. Grant didn't get along well with Mrs. Lincoln, possibly saving the life of a future president. A few minutes after the presidential party arrived, Booth struck. He was able to get through the first set of doors as he was a celebrity. Lincoln's bodyguard had gone to a tavern during the intermission and had not returned. Booth, looking through a people which he had carved earlier in the day, he waited for the funniest moment of the play, which he knew by heart, hoping that the laughter of the audience would cover the gunshot. As the crowd was laughing, he opened the door, crept forward, and shot Lincoln through the head below the left ear. Major Henry Rathbone, who was in the box with Lincoln, jumped up to stop the assassin, and Booth stabbed him in the arm. Booth jumped off the box onto the stage, his spur catching a flag hanging below the box and causing him to land awkwardly. Holding his bloody knife above his head, he cried out, Sick Semper Tyrannus, the Virginia state motto meaning, Thus always to tyrants. At first, the audience thought that he was part of the play, and Booth was able to run out a side door and escape. Lincoln was carried out of the theater and laid at William Peterson's boarding house across the street. Efforts were made to save the president, but to no avail. He died at 7.22 a.m. on April 15th. Although Booth's attack was successful, the other two were not. When Lewis Powell tried to shoot Frederick Seward, William's son, the gun misfired. Instead, he beat Frederick over the head and then ran into William's room and tried to stab him, but missed anything vital in the dark. George Azarot didn't even try to kill Andrew Johnson. He was unable to get up his nerve to make the attempt and instead got drunk and wandered through the streets. The search was soon on to find John Wilkes Booth. Booth fled into Maryland with David Harold and found a doctor to put his leg in a splint. They hid out at the farm of Richard Garnett, who they told they were Confederate soldiers looking for an opportunity to cross the Potomac River into Virginia. However, on April 26, soldiers from the 16th New York Cavalry arrived. Harold and Booth ran into the barn and the soldiers surrounded them and demanded their surrender. Harold acquiesced but Booth declared he wouldn't be taken alive, brandishing a rifle in one hand and a pistol in the other, though without opening fire. The barn was set ablaze, and although under orders to take Booth alive, Sergeant Boston Corbett shot Booth in the neck with his pistol, severing his spinal cord. Booth was drug out onto the steps of the barn. He died two hours later. His killer, Thomas P. Boston Corbett, was an interesting man himself. He was born in London and came to New York City when his family immigrated. He became a hatter, and it's possible that the mercury used in the hatter's trade may have affected his brain. He moved to Boston after his wife died, and there had a conversion experience in the Methodist Church. He changed his name to Boston, castrated himself, and grew out his hair in an attempt to imitate Jesus. When the war came, he enlisted in the militia. He was captured by Mosby's Raiders in Virginia and sent to the Andersonville Prisoner of War Camp. After five months, he was exchanged and promoted to sergeant which rank he held when he shot Booth. Corbett was arrested for disobeying the order not to shoot Booth, 
but Edwin M. Stanton, Secretary of War, soon had the charges dropped. It wouldn't do to punish the man who had killed the national villain. Instead, he was given $1,600 as his part of the reward that had been offered for the capture of the assassin. At first, Corbett claimed that he saw Booth preparing to fire, but when this was contradicted by the other soldiers, he said God had told him to kill Booth. When Corbett was discharged from the army, he again became a hatter and began to act more and more insane. He threatened other soldiers with a pistol at a reunion. He moved to Kansas and was appointed assistant doorkeeper of the House of Representatives there. In another incident, he brandished a pistol in the legislature, which caused him to be committed to an insane asylum. He was able to escape, though, and his fate is uncertain, although he probably died in a great forest fire in Minnesota on September 1, 1894. This has been a clip of our documentary series, Discerning History, Battles of the Civil War. The entire set is available for purchase at discerninghistory.com. You can also subscribe here on our YouTube channel for more free videos. Thanks for watching.